Hello everybody and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This time I will show you several methods how to break stuff apart and then assemble them back together. Without further ado, let's jump right into the Blender. I will not cover anything about fracturing in this tutorial. My starting point will be seen where the main object is already made up from multiple parts and all these parts are neatly shoved into a collection so the project is nice and tidy. Before we start, make sure that all the object's origins are where they're supposed to be and that you have active animation nodes add-on. The first method would be to actually disassemble the plane piece by piece. Believe it or not, that's how I made the helicopter from the Merkur. It's faster than you would think, but there is nothing to be learned but patience. So I will skip over that one. If there's enough parts and chaos, you don't have to worry about any intersections or accuracy. Just select everything and keyframe the location and rotation at the end of the animation. Back at the beginning, set the tool options to affect only the locations and scale everything up. Keyframe the new positions. Congratulations, you now have basic showcase explosion animation. Don't forget to uncheck the locations option again. To emphasize the chaos, you can edit the initial state with randomized transform. You can experiment with different interpolations and we can even randomize the timing a bit in the dope sheet with proportional editing. It looks cool already, but it can look much cooler if it doesn't happen all at once. I will create an empty object and animate it passing through the plane. It will control what's assembled and what's not. From now on we will need the animation nodes. Open the end panel and go to the animation nodes tab. We want to add two new ID keys to store the start and assembled positions of the pieces. Select all the pieces, go to the end of the timeline and click on the from current transform for the assembled ID. Then go to the first frame and do the same for the start ID. Now delete all the keyframes and open animation nodes. Create new node tree and set the auto execution only when something changes. First we need of course all the parts, luckily they are all in one collection so I can get them from the collection info node. Then I need the before and after transforms, we store them into the ID keys. I also like to hide all the outputs that I don't need. Next step is to mix between the transforms. Unfortunately, in this version of animation nodes, you can't put list of matrices into the mix node. Let's make a loop then. Connect A and B as iterators and factor as parameter. Generate a new output of type matrices list. Well, we created our own mix matrices node, so use it. Put the result to the object matrix output node. Play with the factor and the values between 0 and 1 should do exactly what we want. Be careful of the values outside of this range. Now we are back where we were already. But this time we can use different factor for every piece. Just delete the factor from the loop and connect it also as an iterator. I said it will be controlled by the empty object, so add an object controller fellow, set it to directional and put the empty there. Then evaluate the fellow based on the locations of the assembled pieces. The resulting strengths are our factors. The animation looks already much better. And you can play with the interpolation again. One little neat trick is to let the pieces appear from a thin air. We will achieve it by scaling them from 0 to 1. The values are already there. It's the strengths. Just convert them to a vector. Put at the end the object transform output 
and control the scale. Nicely done! So, what if you do care about the collisions? For that, we will need a rigid body simulation and run it backwards. Start at the last frame and deactivate the animation node. Select the pieces again and activate the rigid body physics. The defaults are fine, I just like to increase the friction a bit and a rotation dumping a lot. Now run the rigid body copy from active and try the simulation. Ok, next step, turn off the gravity. To stop them from flying forever, crank up also the translation damping. It's happening all at once again, so let's use the empty. Reverse its keyframes. And go back to the animation nodes. Delete the previous nodes, but left there the objects and the falloff. To turn on the rigid body, we need to switch this dynamic checkbox. Right click on it and copy the data path. Add an attribute output node and paste the data path there. Connect the objects, check the multiple values and pass the strength to it. Enable the auto execution again and test if it works. In my case I have to invert the falloff. It works fine, but I would like a bigger spread, so I will put a force field on the empty object. Also running the animation nodes and rigid body simulation at the same time is quite difficult for my PC. So I will temporarily turn the physics off, bake the animation nodes to keyframes, turn the animation nodes off and re-enable the physics. The force field should be quite strong and also should stop working after a certain radius. When you are happy with the result, select all the parts again and bake the simulation to the keyframes. To reverse the animation, just scale the keyframes by minus one. We can also apply the scaling trick from the previous method. Get rid of the force field and reverse the empty. Reconnect the object transform and enable the auto execution again. To finish this method, bake it to keyframes and disable the nodes. For the last part, what if we want to break it with collisions and rebuild it, but to different shape or somewhere else? First the breaking. No sweat there, it's easy, we just did it. I will just bring there a ground and set it as passive rigid body with box shape and slightly higher friction. Activate the gravity, select all the pieces again and set them as rigid bodies. Higher friction and rotation dumping and we are all set. Also copy the settings as always. For now I will move the keyframes out of the way to the negative time. Try the simulation. If the pieces are stuck on the deactivated dynamic settings from the previous playing with the animation nodes, just go to the dope sheet, search for rigid body, delete the keyframes and finally activate the dynamics and copy the settings again. Everything is fine now, so bake it. Move everything out of the way so we can work from the first frame. In the first frame, create the state you want to end up with. I want to have the same plane, just on the ground. So I will recall the transforms from the stored assembled ID key, move everything on the ground and keyframe anything available. Now I will repeat pretty much the same simulation as a minute ago. Activate rigid body, set friction and damping, copy the settings, Reverse the empty movement. Mm, 
go to the animation nodes and reconnect them for enabling the rigid bodies. I have to invert the fall off as usual, bake the animation node. Bake the simulation. Reverse the keyframes. And prepare yourself for the most complicated part of this tutorial. Put everything back nicely on the timeline. And look what we have. It kinda works except this one part where the simulation produced very different piles of rubble. As you can guess, we will use animation nodes to repair it. And I promise you that this is the last time we will change the movement of the empty object. I'm starting to think we should have used two of them. Close the gap between the actions and remember where it should be. Start the empty about a second before the gap and end it about a second after. Select all the pieces and go to the graph editor. Select all the channels, right click and mute them. Now we need to go to the animation nodes and somehow access the animation data. So we can edit them. Unfortunately, I haven't found any easy way. So we will read the animation curves one by one. Start with F curves from object. Then we need to access first nine curves with get list element. Three for location, three for rotation and three for scale. Then we need to evaluate all these curves in absolute frame number. Then combine the result to respective transforms. And finally, combine those transforms to one nice transformation matrix. If anybody has better solution, please let me know. Because we need to do it for all the objects in different frame numbers, let's pack it to a loop. Object is an iterator, the frame number is just a parameter, and the final matrix is of course an output. Now, let's try to forget this monstrosity and just use it as regular node. Put the pieces to the object input and time info to the frame number. Try to apply this to the matrix output. Activate the execution and play the animation. As in the first method, we had to get back to what we already had in order to edit it now. I will use two different timelines, one regular that will end in the frame 180, because that's where the jump happens, and one that's running at 30 frames sooner, because that's how much lead we gave to the empty object before the jump. Now I will mix the timelines based on the empty position. This means that when the empty passes some piece, that piece will jump 30 frames ahead in its animation. After that, do one last bake of the nodes, fire up EV or cycles and render the result. I hope you find something useful. Thank you very much for watching and till the next time, happy blending.